Well, I've been asked to speak about the Russian Revolution and the commun the Comintern, the Communist International. It's um, 90 years since the foundation of the Communist International, and in a few days' time, it's 92 years since the Russian Revolution. Now, the October Revolution for genuine Marxists is really the only genuine socialist revolution in history in the sense that it was a revolution where the working class took power. Um, took power through the Soviets. I mean, the Soviets have become a, a word which many people interpret in a different way, but it's just a Russian word for councils. It's the workers' councils, which were elected um, in the workplaces, in the neighbourhoods, in the army, in, in the peasants. They elected delegates to represent them, then, who then elected delegates to a higher body, and then there was the, the, the main Soviet that gathered all these bodies. So they, basically they were... A democratic ex an expression of, of, of the democratic will of working people in Russia, which were thrown up by the 1905 revolution, in fact. They are, in, in reality, it's like an extension of a shop steward committee or a factory committee uh, beyond the factory to the degree where they can actually run a, a neighbourhood or a city. And it, uh, th that, that's what it was. And the workers took power through these organs. Um, and they were fully democratic. The delegates were elected, they could be recalled, they could be changed, and they regularly were. Now, it's fashionable these days uh, in the history books, the bourgeois media, etc., to present the Russian Revolution as a coup. Now, what's implied by coup is that it's not the expression, it's not the will of the, of, of the, of the people, but it's a, a small group of people, usually connected to uh, uh, the military, coup is usually connected to a military coup, i.e. A, a minority of, of um, you know, uh, military men, the, the armed bodies of men of, of the state, who carry out a coup, like the coup we had recently in Honduras, which overthrew the, elect, the democratically elected government. Now, the reason they do this, they want to bury the truth about the Russian Revolution, which was not a coup, which was not carried out by a small uh, clique. The real coup was being prepared by the Russian military, uh, generals like Kornilov, Denikin, who had attempted to crush the revolution, not the October Revolution, this was before October, to crush the actual democratic revolution which had taken place in February 1917. And they were crushing, they were, they were aiming to crush that revolution, and they would have crushed it brutally in blood, as we've seen in many times in history in, uh, in other countries. The myth also that's presented today, also in Russia they've rewritten the history books, is that had the Bolsheviks not taken power in October, then Russia would have had decades of democratic uh, government and uh, capitalist development, etc. Well, if we look at other countries of a similar level of development in 1917, India or other countries, we see that we didn't have decades of capitalist development and we didn't have decades of democracy. And in fact, if we look at the historical period in which the revolution took place, we see things like Italy, which was a democracy in the sense that it was a, it was a um, constitutional monarchy and a, and a parliament, etc. In 1922, Mussolini took power. And in 1926, he declared the dictatorship and he legalized all other parties. In Germany, in 1933, Hitler came to power. And in Spain, there was the Franco uh, coup, which eventually led to a dictatorship. In China, 1925-26, we have the Chiang Kai-shek uh, coup. We had several countries where there were uh, uh, attempts at carrying out revolutions which were um, thwarted by, by coups. And in Russia, what we would have had had there not been the Bolshevik Party and the Bolshevik Revolution of October 1917, you would have had most likely a military coup and you'd have had the installation of a military regime which would have brought, pro, might have possibly brought back even the Tsar, if not that, at least it would have been a bourgeois uh, dicta dictatorship defending the interests also of the feudal landlords and the nascent Russian bourgeoisie. And the point is this, that in the conditions which existed at the time, so deep was the crisis of capitalism and so intense was the class struggle between the two main contending classes that there was no, no compromise was possible. Compromise under capitalism, compromise, is possible when the capitalist economy is booming, 
over a long period of time, when there's a long period of economic development, in which the mass of the population feel that things are improving. And not just for one or two years, but for a long historical period. It establishes confidence in the system and allows a stabilisation of the political system and allows bourgeois democracy to exist. Once capitalism enters into crisis, a deep crisis, and that historical period finishes, then we see the bourgeoisie reacts in a different way. Honduras is a clear example of that. The conflict there um, uh, led, has, has led to this coup. Now, if we go back to Russia uh, in the early part of the 20th century, it was quite an under, underdeveloped country. A huge mass of the population was peasant, mostly illiterate, backward, extremely underdeveloped economy, with pockets of very advanced industrialization in some areas of the country, in some, in some of the cities, because you had uh, foreign investment, and instead of having capitalism developing like, say, in Britain or France, where it emerged gradually over a period from uh, you know, small merchant capital and, 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 and the early small industries developing into a larger bourgeois class and becoming an imperialist uh, class on, on a world scale, in Russia, that kind of development didn't take place. You had the, in, uh, the almost, you, you had the transfer of quite advanced industry and the investment of foreign capital setting up modern industrial plants with the latest technology in the midst of quite a backward economy. So you had these kind of islands of developed industry coming with it, also a modern proletariat, like a working class which also organized and organized trade unions and struggle. In the context, however, of extremely backward uh, society. Now, Trotsky explained that in these conditions, and I think he was the, he was the first to see it, even Lenin, to be, to, to the, the truth is, that didn't understand what Trotsky was referring to at that particular stage. Trotsky explained that in the conditions of Russia, and c given the domination of imperialism, and given the links of the bourgeois class of Russia, to feudalism. Many, in many cases, they were the same people. It was landlords investing in industry, etc. The Russian bourgeoisie had become reactionary before it had even come to power. Marx made this point about the German bourgeoisie in, in, in the previous century. And Trotsky explained that because at the same time, in, in, in this backwardness, obviously the, the immediate prospect is, if you look at the historical development of society, that we're moving towards what is a bourgeois revolution, either like bourgeois democratic revolution, which overthrows landlordism, sets up a modern state, creates the conditions for capitalist development, and with it also uh, democracy. Historically speaking, that task is, obviously, the bourgeois revolution should be carried out by the bourgeoisie. Trotsky pointed out the Russian bourgeoisie was incapable of doing that, and because the proletariat, either working class, the industrial working class, had developed... Uh, was far more developed than, say, the working class in Cromwellian days in, in, in England, or even at the time of the French Revolution, the working class, uh, so developed, would move towards revolution, and the task of the bourgeois revolution would fall to the working class. But because it was the working class that would carry out the revolution, the working class wouldn't stop at the bourgeois phase, i.e., take power and then give it to the bourgeoisie, the very same bourgeoisie that was in alliance with the feudal aristocrats and also a puppet of imperialism. So he, he developed the theory of the permanent revolution, which is it will start off as a bourgeois democratic revolution, but it would grow over very quickly into the socialist tasks. And so